Brent. Good morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Zeus is gone, but his memory remains. No, he didn't leave anything <laughs> no, behind. Leave. No, no. <laughs> but that's a big dog, man. Zeus, he felt. I think he was kind of cornered in here, and he needed a little bit more room to roam. It, it's funny what it, it, at the end when um, they were talking about the the events and such, and I hope everybody took notes. Zeus was in the back playing with his leash. I didn't hear a word that anybody said because Zeus wanted to eat that leash. He wanted to eat the leash. He wanted to. That's a lot of dog. It is. It's a lot of dog. And uh, and he doesn't like that leash. Sweet boy. Yeah, nice dog. S- sweet dog. Very nice. Uh, we are uh, every year around this time in the habit of doing something with uh, Jason Morris from Jefferson County, Jefferson High School's ROTC cadet program. He's in the background there. You might be able to see him. And they do a shoe drive. And the cadets uh, do a marvelous job with this uh, shoe drive and plus the other service they do in the community. And three of these cadets are in studio with us right now. And i got to go back to the glasses to be able to read on my handwriting here. So one second. Travis Jenkins, who is a cadet colonel. Travis, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Allie Hickman, who is cadet major. Allie. Good morning. And Samantha Ogden, who is cadet major. Good morning. All right. What year of school are you all in uh, at the high school? I'm a senior. Senior? I am also a senior. I'm a senior as well. Okay, three seniors. And uh, what are you all going to do next year once high school is no longer part of your day? I plan on going to college and doing ROTC program in college and then I'll commission as an officer into the military. Oh, congratulations. Do you know what school you're going to go to yet? No, sir, I do not. All right, Allie? I'm hoping to also go through the ROTC route, hopefully Air Force ROTC, and then commission as an Air Force officer. Mm-hmm. And Samantha? Um, I'm planning to go to undergraduate for a pre-medical degree and then go to medical school. Very impressive. Well, congratulations to all three of you, and uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, how you got involved in ROT and C and such, but first I want you to promote your shoe drive that you're doing there. Who wants to do this one on this first term? I'll do this one. Colonel, so, fire out. Every November we collect money for the Shoe and Co. Fund. It's a great fundraiser, and what it does is we collect money, and then we take the money that we earn. It'll go into the Board of Education's account, and then all students in Jefferson County will have access so that students in need can um, use the money to purchase clothes, and schools typically get involved with that, and they can help purchase clothes for families in need. Were you involved in this last year? Yes, sir, I was. What's a typical collection amount that you guys end up with? I would say we normally end up um, over $50,000. but um, That's impressive. It ranges from year to year. Yeah. Where, does, where do the collections come from? They come from various places. Uh, we have a lot of cadets in our corps, mm-hmm. so they get pretty creative with where the money comes from. Uh, the majority of it does come from going door to door. Uh, we have some cadets stand outside of businesses. Some cadets get donations from businesses. Some people put out jars. There's there's a lot of different sources of the money. Will you actually collect uh, a shoes or a coat? No, sir. We just take cash or checks. Just the money? Yes, sir. All right. So, John, keep your shoes on. You don't have to. <laughs> I know you, you were thinking. You, you, you don't yes, please, mine. John. You keep your you shoes on. Mine. You don't want mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you get involved in ROTC, Travis, and, and why did this appeal to you so much so that you want to go into the service afterward? So when I was in middle school, I heard great things about the program. Uh, I heard about developing leadership, serving the community, heard it was a great program to get into, and I was interested in pursuing a career in the military, so I think that drove my initial interest into mm-hmm. joining. And once I was in, I realized that, yes, that is what I wanted to do as a career, so that's led me to stay in. Very good, Allie. I also, I heard about it, I think it was eighth grade, um, and I heard about all the service they do, and I knew a few people at the time who were going into the program, so I just thought almost, why not? And then when I got in there, and I saw how much service they really do throughout the county, I mean, there's something every weekend, most to all Saturdays, and then that just led me to want to be a leader in the program, which eventually led me to getting into core management, and it's been an amazing experience. Samantha? Um, I knew a few people in the program, and I was interested, so I went to the orientation that we have in the summer, and I really enjoyed that. So I started getting involved in the program, and I really liked being able to get as much as I put into the program through community service and working up in leadership. So it's been a great experience. Mr. Gilstrap. Within the ROTC training, is there is there a military spin on it? Do you learn about military stuff? I mean, you've mentioned service, but is there? Do you learn about military tactics or history or such? Whoever wants to answer that. 
Yeah, so in your first year, you do learn a little bit about the military. You also learn about first aid, things like that. And then in your second year, you still learn about different parts of the military. Same with your third year. And then after school, we do drill. We have something called the honor guard team. They do drill. They get ready for our drill competitions, which we do have two coming up here. And then also during the classes, we practice drill, uh, just basically military drill, stuff like that. At what point do they cover that the best pilots are in the Navy? Is that is that ever <laughs> part of the program? That's what I learned from my father. I'm just curious. Is that... <laughs> they don't cover joke. that. You don't, it, yeah. Yeah, was, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Harvey. Are there... Are there standards that you must meet to be in the ROTC? Um, yeah, we do follow Air Force standards in the ROTC. So everything is based off of the standards that the Air Force sets for things like your hair, um, piercings. Um, mostly just on uniform day, we have to meet the Air Force standards. So boys have to have you know short hair, girls have to have it up. Um, Things like that. So. Well, what about to enter? Like, do you have to have a certain GPA, or you, is there a physical test? Um, there. Well, we do do a physical fitness test um, twice a year, but it is not required to stay in the program to meet those. It's um, if you achieve a certain amount, you can get ribbons, things like that, based on how you perform. Um, yeah, the GPA uh, is not required to have a specific GPA to be in ROTC, but obviously if you are falling behind in other classes, you can't be as involved. Um, and we do have an honor society through ROTC, Kitty Hawk Honor Society, where you do have to have a 3.4 GPA. So, What is something that you've learned uh, during your service that's, that's helped you in the real world or th in school? I'll answer this one first. Um, I've definitely learned leadership. Um, I think it's easy to say that you uh, are a leader or something without actually applying it, but the more you apply it, which is something I've done through ROTC, the more you realize um, there's a lot of room for improvement. You can always improve and how to actually become a leader. And that'll be applied not only outside of the classroom doing community service events, but a lot of that uh, that we can take to careers through being an ROTC. That's for all three of you. But besides not learning that Navy has the best pilots, which I, I didn't know either. So, <laughs> Smack in the face of the Air Force when you <laughs> I, say I, I, I know. I know. I know. I know. I that's a, a joke that landed flat here. I, I, I was <laughs> you gave it a shot. Yeah, you, you gave it a shot there too, right? So what other kind of service things do you folks do during the year, Samantha? Um, so we go to the Apple Harvest Festival. Um, we also are out at the car show. So... A lot of things there we help up. Uh, we help vendors set up their their places there. Um, we help parking at the Apple Harvest as well as at Middleway Day. We also do activities with kids there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What other That's a pretty good list. We do? Yeah, we do a lot of um, events. Pretty much something every weekend. We do things during Christmas, old-time Christmas um, in Herbers Ferry and areas like that so, so what do you what do you do when you go there you have direct traffic or you're parking cars or what do you do um it really depends we do pretty much everything depending on the event we park cars at some events sometimes we help kids um at old time christmas we can make s'mores for the kids that's one oh. thing that we do um so it really just it definitely varies based on what event we're at you didn't bring any s'mores with you <laughs> <but> just, <laughs> not today yeah. no yeah so how many of you will go when you go to help out at a place um we they usually give us a number of how much help they need um and then we'll base it off of that so sometimes it's five sometimes it's 30 mm -hmm. cadets based off what we're doing so how um, many of you are there there are 200 cadets in our program right now wow, wow. are they all jefferson high school yes sir that's impressive do any of the other high schools have rotc programs too so no other high schools have the rotc program however jefferson and washington share an rotc program so what that means is Jefferson hosts the ROTC program, and then Washington students that want to participate, obviously they don't go to Jefferson, so they can ride a transfer bus and still be involved in our program. And they'll take all of their classes at Jefferson, and it's still an opportunity for them. Do you? How many uh, Washington High students are with you? I don't know exactly how many. There's a good bit. Uh, a decent population of our cadets involved are actually transfers, so we do consider them Jefferson students because they take all of their academic classes at Jefferson but a lot of them do actually come from Washington. So they don't spend any time at the Washington High School building during their day? 
No, sir. The only time they spend there is when they're waiting for their bus. That's interesting. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. I wonder how the West Virginia SSAC looks at that. <laughs> illegal. Illegal. Can't, yeah. can't play sports. So, uh, Samantha, you seem locked in on pre-med. You, you're, you're going to medicine. <laughs> Let's just call and her doctor now. Doctor, we'll okay, right. and, and you guys are, are locked into going into the military, which is a huge footprint. There are all kinds of different specialties within the military. Any idea what, what corner of the military you want to carve out for yourselves? Yes, sir. I'm considering intelligence or foreign affairs. Okay. Will it be with the Air Force? I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I still have a couple of scholarships to apply for, and we'll see what if any scholarships come through. That'll probably most likely be the biggest factor in influencing my p decision. Are you eyeing the academies? Yes, sir. Allie, how Good about you? I was also thinking the intelligence field and the Air Force. Are you applying to the, to the academy, Air Force Academy? No, sir. I just I think my main goal is Air Force ROTC. Okay. And, and Samantha, are, are you considering using the military as a way of getting your medical degree without running up large loans? Um, yeah, I have considered um, Air Force scholarships, things like that. Definitely depends. Um, you know, I'm trying to get scholarships elsewhere, definitely get my undergraduate degree as mm -hmm. affordable as possible, and then kind of just see what happens and where I can get scholarships to. So. so tell me about coming into the program and can you come into the program in ninth grade? Yes, sir. So, the first thing, so tell me about coming into the program the first year and then now where you are as seniors. Travis, why don't you go ahead and go first? So the first year you come in, uh, things are going to look a little different by the time you're a senior. When you come in, it's a lot of introductory uh, lessons and stuff like that. Uh, introductory we, lessons about what? We teach you how to wear a uniform. We instruct you on – there's a lot more instruction when you're a first year. There's a lot more hands-on. We teach you. We show you how to do things so that by the time you're a senior – you can kind of lead those things. Mm -hmm. So we, t we aid a lot in uniform wear. Um, there's a lot of leniency on that compared to when you're a senior. And we do, in so first years have more instruction based in the classroom. It's a little more from the beginning. So we teach them about the beginning of flight, um, how it started. There's just the content on like the Wright brothers. So things from the very beginning, it starts a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you're a senior, you're learning things about like finances, things that you're gonna apply in the real world. So it does progress. Practical stuff. Yes, so you mentioned leniency. So there comes a time when there's not as much leniency. What, what are the consequences for not uh, being appropriately dressed? So we do weekly uniform wear. Mm -hmm. We wear the uniform once a week. Um, normally we do it on Tuesdays. Sometimes that varies. But every week you get a uniform inspection, and you'll have one of your leaders of the program, and they will walk around. They will inspect each person's uniform, and then they get a grade for it. So if your uniform is incorrect, there's not really a punishment, but it does reflect in your grade. So you might not get an A, for instance. Yes, sir. So that, that is a possibility. However, a lot of people do care about the uniform wear, so they will put effort in. And it's easy to do well because there's a lot of help available. Do most people in ROTC get an A or whatever the highest grade might be as it's assigned? Yes, sir. I think almost everyone gets an A because the people that are in the program – most of the time, they want to be there, mm -hmm. and it reflects. Allie, have you ever gotten a B? No, I've had an A all four years in Air Force Junior ROTC. Come clean, Samantha. I have as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have brought you if you, if you yeah, were getting Bs, right? Not. So is there academic credit for uh, JROTC? Is that a JROTC? Yes, sir. So you get credit as an elective, um, but you also get, if you do ROTC for two years, you do, it does count as a gym credit as well. So. Okay. Now, how about if when you go on to the military, does it count toward time in service? Yes, sir. So if you plan on enlisting out of um, right out of high school and joining the military, there is a promotion involved, which does indeed mean a pay increase. So cool. that is a great great opportunity for those interested in enlisting. So does it count toward the whatever it is, 20 years re retirement time? Does that? No, sir. It doesn't count towards any um, service time, but it does. It like I said, it it will allow you to get a promotion. Cool. We all like being promoted, right? Yeah. So uh, as you leave, what advice do you leave behind for the kids who are behind you and some of the ones that you've worked with when now they're juniors, I guess? I think my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to try new things. Um, you learn through trying, and sometimes you're going to fail, but you learn more through the failure as long as you don't let it become something bigger than it is. You can learn a lot from it. Did you get a good education in the public school system in West Virginia, Travis? Yes, sir. I would say I did, but I have nothing to compare it to, but I would say that I did. <laughs> I like that qualifier there, Allie. 
<laughs> I'd say one piece of advice, probably the biggest piece of advice, is kind of just savor it while it lasts. Mm-hmm. Because once you hit a se- senior and you're kind of the ones like leading, you kind of realize this is your last year doing it. And then next year, you're kind of starting all over. So definitely take it in while it lasts, especially junior year. Did you get a good education in the West Virginia public school system? I think so. It definitely gave me a lot of opportunities that I don't think I would have elsewhere. And some of the like best people I've met have been through the education system. Mm-hmm. Samantha? You better um, you better say yes or yeah. your mom's going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. her, her mom's on the board of education. <laughs> That's um, a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would definitely tell people just put in as much as you want to get out. So don't be afraid to get involved. Um, take the time to do opportunities. You'll wish you got involved in more afterwards if you don't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, don't be afraid to try things that you never thought you would before and you might like it. Um I think I did get a pretty good education through the system. Good answer, Doc. Uh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So, I, go ahead, Matt. Uh, so, I have two questions. Like, how does, I mean, it's impressive, I think, to hear 200 members. Uh, that's great. How does that compare to other schools in West Virginia or the area? And then, number two, are there colleges that are JROTC friendly? I'll answer this one. So, uh, as opposed as like compared to other schools in West Virginia, we have a very large unit. There's a lot of involvement from where we are in the state. Um, that answers that question. That we are a pretty large unit compared to some other schools. And are you the biggest, or do you know? We are the biggest in West Virginia. Yes, sir. Good. And then for the colleges that are JROTC friendly, um, I would say a lot of colleges are because it looks great on an application because it shows that you've already applied. You have more skills than some people that didn't take JRDC. It's kind of like a, I guess you could call it more of a qualification. You're something that colleges can look at and they can see, well, this person did ROTC, so we know where they're kind of at. Do do colleges have the same programs? They have ROTC, so we're a junior ROTC, so it's on the high school level. But yes, sir, a a lot of the principals are still the same. I know. There was an ROTC program at Duquesne when I was there. Uh, a friend of mine on my dorm floor uh, got involved in it because they they would do uh, on what the first week of school they would do rappelling down the buildings. Which you know, if you're, if you're like 18, you're like oh, that looks pretty cool. And <laughs> as a 60 year old, I would never do that now. But back then, that looked pretty cool. And he got involved in it. Ended up making a career out of the army. Uh, did some heroic work in Afghanistan and uh, finished his career in the Pentagon all because he took a chance, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, you never know until you put yourself out there, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. What's the hardest part of the program? I mean, not everybody goes from – some people are going to drop out. And when you talk to the people who have dropped out of the program, what typically is is the hard part for them? Tying a tie the first time. So- <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, uniform standards definitely take part in it. Some people don't want to cut their hair. Um, okay. They don't like to wear the uniform, but it's really not weird. I mean, there's since there are so many people, you're always going to have someone in your class. But, um, you know, not everybody wants to have short hair and try to keep this maintained. Well, your hair's not that short. Sense. It's not like you had a buzz <laughs> cut or anything. <laughs> yeah, girls, they huh? only, we only have to have it up. But a lot of guys, they want to have long hair, and so it doesn't appeal to them. But... I'd like to have long hair, too, but that train passed about 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we are in studio with uh, uh, Colonel, uh, I'd say Colonel Travis Jenkins here. Also, uh, then the the next two are majors, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. So uh, Allie Hickman and Samantha Ogden, both are majors. Is Colonel the top ranking you can get in junior ROTC, or can you go above Colonel, Travis? No, sir. Colonel's the top rank you can get. Are there various stages of being a Colonel? No, sir. Lieutenant Colonel and Colonel? Is it just Colonel? There there is a Lieutenant Colonel, but once you... uh, it's our our rank system is based a lot on position. Mm-hmm. So we have leaders in the program, and those leaders will have ranks that reflect their positions. So do you preside over all 200 cadets then? Are you the top-ranking junior ROTC officer? Yes, sir, I am. Um, my position is group commander, and what that essentially entails is me overseeing the leaders of the program. So there's a lot of pressure on you. You have to set the standard. You could say that, yes, sir. You have to live the uh, example. Yes, sir. If you, when you start your day in the morning, do you ever think to yourself, this is a lot of pressure. How am I going to handle this? There's been that thought <laughs> a time or two. Because, you, you know, you're in high school. You now, it's one thing to be 40 years old in charge of two or 300 people, but you're a teenager. You're in charge of 200 people. Yes, sir. 
Am I making you nervous? No, sir. All right, good job. You can handle a career in the military then. He put up with cross-examination on this show. He's solid, Harvey. I didn't. You're a professional cross-examination. Yeah, I was going to so. say, I guess that qualifies as a cross-examination. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a teenager. Right? All right, very good. Okay, <laughs> excuse me. We've got about a minute left. Uh, the shoe, shoe and coat drive again. Uh, hit that up so we can uh, let people know how they can help. Um, yeah, donation uh, is available through cash or checks. Um, checks can be payable to Jefferson High School. Um, if you have any questions about the Shoe and Coat Fund, you can contact Jefferson High School at 304-725-8491. And tonight we are also doing a spirit night at Chick-fil-A where part of the proceeds will be yes. going to the Shoe and Coat Fund. So anybody who Smart. orders through the mobile app tonight from 5 to 8 will be helping the Shoe and Coat Fund. All the local Chick-fil-A's? Or? Um, that is the Ranson location okay. of Chick-fil-A. So. Ranson Chick-fil-A. All right, so give yourselves a grade for how you did here today as your final grade of this uh, radio station show here. Go ahead, Travis. What would you give I think I would give it an A. It was a great experience, and I appreciate you guys having us out here. I would agree. Allie? I would say an A+. Plus. Oh, Maybe some top. extra Whoa. credit, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll give you extra credit. There. Absolutely. That's a good idea. No, they didn't bring any treats, so no extra credit. <laughs> Samantha, what do you say? Yeah, I would say an A. I think we covered covered a great amount of things. So, yeah. You agree, Jason? He's got the A. He's got the A. <laughs> We're back with a final minute next. Love runs high in this time. Give it to me.